What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm back with another Dino deck profile but this is a deck that you may not have seen especially recently. It's a deck that my friends and I cooked up years ago and it's Trap Dino. It's a different take on Dino but I think it's a really cool way to play the deck. Now if you guys enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel but we do a full 10 videos per week. Five long videos, five shorts. You guys are going to get a little bit of everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video make sure to try this out for yourselves because i think this deck is really really cool so with that being said i don't want to hold you guys for much longer let's get right into the deck profile all right so just before we get into today's deck profile i do want to say that it might look weird here on paper but there's actually a lot of theory behind trap dino this is a deck my friends and i kind of built and put together years ago and i was thinking hey it's a really good time to kind of update it because we have some access to some really powerful trap cards which are really good into today's format right so that's why i really wanted to update it let's get right into the deck profile here though the dino stuff we're not playing the scrap engine it's going to be more or less pure dino so we're playing three ov raptor of course the best normal summon in your deck we're playing two ultimate conductor to Tyranno, one Misk, two Baby, one Petite, one Arco, one Giant Rex, as well as one Pankratops. Okay, so I know I went through that kind of fast. A lot of Dino stuff here is pretty standard, but I'll explain real quick. We're only playing two Baby and one Arco because essentially with this deck, because you're not playing the Scrap Monsters, you're not really comboing off like crazy. This is really a control-based deck of Dino. You're really playing a lot of trap cards like you guys can see to slow down the game state. And essentially, you're only going to be resolving this once or twice in the duel. And once you do resolve it once or twice, you're going to have so much advantage anyways that you're probably going to be winning the game right so at that point you really don't want to be maxing out on this especially because you don't have that many ways to be popping the card right so this is all you need very condensed dino lineup and again a lot of the times if you can just end your turn on like a petite pteranodon sometimes on board that's all you need because petite pteranodon synergizes with some cards that you guys are going to see in this deck and then on top of that you're going to be able to end on pankertops with a lot of your boards and this is kind of another form of disruption that you're going to be able to put up right so that's why i really like these ratios this is all you're really going to need then you're going to be playing three fossil dig of course because just more consistency getting to your ov raptor two double evolution pill i will say because you're not playing the scrap package because you're not playing hand traps double evolution pill is a little bit harder to get off you're not just going to be firing it left right and center like in a lot of the otk versions however this card is still really powerful you still need to be playing to search of all of arcosaur and you're really going to be focused on the link monsters of your deck helping you get them to the graveyard which makes double evolution pill live right so you still got to be playing two three lost world because lost world is really good in two cost matchups funny enough but it's also the main focus of this deck because if you're able to set up a lost world it's kind of like lost world control with your trap cards and that's kind of how the deck functions yes it makes your opponent's monsters lose 500 attack and defense very very relevant puts a token on your opponent's side of the field which means your dinos cannot be targeted very very relevant but on top of that there's a trap card that you guys are going to see in a little bit that essentially helps you get this off and helps you gain a bunch of advantage just by having a token on your opponent's side of the field right so that's why we're playing three lost world one terraforming of course to get to the lost world then we're playing three prosperity more consistency essentially if you don't see your dinos you prosperity into your dinos if you don't see your traps prosperity into your traps so whatever you're missing prosperity kind of helps you get there which is really really nice then for the traps and i'm going to go a little bit more in depth with the trap cards here the other stuff before the traps is pretty standard but i really want to get into depth with the trap cards so first of all we're playing three imperm i just thought three imperm was just kind of the best trap you're going first going second it's always going to be very relevant so three imperm of course is really good but then we're playing three the ruma cannon as well as two floodgate trap hole now you guys might be wondering okay what's the point of playing these cards well in general in today's format these cards are pretty good they're good into kashtara they're good into sprite they're good into trap trick funny enough you guys might be wondering oh but floodgate trap hole doesn't do anything he's a trap trick yes but the ruma cannon does and the ruma cannon is very very powerful this card is also really good going first and going second because going first of course if you set it and your opponent starts making a board then you know you can disrupt them and they don't make that board but going second you can set this card and if your opponent tries to enter battle phase or something like that and they already have a board established you can flip this kind of clear their board especially if you have other trap cards as well to back that up right so that's why the ruma cannon is really nice also both the ruma cannon and floodgate trap hole synergize extremely well with ultimate conductor tyranno a lot of the times you're going to be able to set up a pentastag with a conductor tyranno and if you have some of these traps you're winning that game like you're just going to be able to do so much damage yes this is a control deck don't get me wrong it's still very much a trap based deck however because you're playing dino at the end of the day you can just otk out of no 
nowhere. And that's the most powerful thing about this deck because as soon as you put Conduct Tyrant on the board, this is a force to be reckoned with. Like this card is just something that you can just OTK with out of nowhere, right? And your opponent won't see it coming. So that's why I think I really like these trap cards, the Floodgate, as well as the Rumi Cannon, good going first, good going second. So they're really good in that sense. Then we're playing two Survival's End. This card is insane. And this is kind of the card that I was talking about that synergizes really well with Lost World. Essentially, this card says you can destroy as many normal monsters on the field as possible. And if you do special summon level four or lower dinosaur type monsters from your deck up to the number destroyed. Now that's really cool. But the thing is when you're activating that effect, you can then protect the token with the lost world. If you're protecting the token with the lost world, you can pop a baby. Now baby is going to be able to get to something like an Oviraptor. Ovi is going to be able to search like a conductor Tyranno, something like that. You know what I mean? Like this is where all the advantage starts to just like snowball and it becomes a lot, a lot stronger and it just becomes a lot stronger. So for that reason, survival's end is really good, but it has a really cool second effect where it says you can banish this card from your graveyard, target a dinosaur monster you control and a card your opponent controls, destroy it. Keep in mind, it says target a card your opponent controls, which means it can be any card on the field. And on top of that, if you're able to end a lot of your boards with the Petit Pteranodon, which is what I said earlier, you really sometimes want to end on just a Petit Pteranodon because if you're able to pop this card and then you're going to be able to pop a card your opponent controls, but then you're going to be able to summon Pankratops off of the Petit Pteranodon effect. And then now you have another layer of disruption, which is just really nice, right? So two survival zen, very, very powerful. Two Morella. Morella is really nice because it lets you send a trap from your deck to the graveyard. One of the best traps to be sending, of course, is the survival zen, which we just talked about. But the really cool thing about Morella as well is that it can act as a body for you. At the end of the day, it's a Paleozoic monster. So if you activate any of your other trap cards, you summon the Morella, and then Morella is going to be able to be link fodder for you, which is really nice. So this has multi use. Yes, it sends you survival end. It also sends a card like Lost Wind, which is very powerful because Lost Wind can put itself back onto the field, but it also becomes a body for you, which helps you get into your link monsters, which is really nice. So Morella, of course, is very important. Two Lost Wind, like I just said, Lost Wind essentially is just another version of Imperm, just a monster negate, but it's also really nice because when your opponent special summons a monster, you can set this card from your graveyard, which is kind of nice. So that's why I really like two Lost Wind. And lastly, we're playing two Trap Trick just to help us get into any of these trap cards. That's why we're playing two of everything. Yes, of course, you can max out on some of these, but I really like Trap Trick because essentially it always gets you to the one you're missing, right? If you're playing three of everything, don't get me wrong. It's not that it's bad, but it's kind of like, what if I open like triple Morella or double Morella, right? Versus if I open Trap Trick Morella, at least this way I can get to a Daruma Cannon plus a Morella kind of thing. You know, it just kind of different ways that you can see it. And the reason why I play Trap Trick is because it gets you to the other trap cards that you might be missing. So that's it for the main deck. It's 40 card main deck. Again, very, very consistent with the prosperity, with the fossil dig. You're always going to be seeing everything you want to see, which is really nice, right? Moving on to the extra deck here. I don't really have to go too much in depth. It's just standard dino stuff. We're playing two Dolka, two Logia, playing one Tornado Dragon, one Dugaris, one Baguska. We're not playing Dweller. I don't think you need to be playing Dweller in today's format, but these cards are all really, really relevant. One Link Karibo as well as one Secure Gardena helps you get a Link Monster in the graveyard, of course, which is very powerful for your double evolution pill. So you got to be playing one on one. We're playing two Pentasteg because this is very important. A lot of the time you're going to be OTKing because of this card. So that's why this card, obviously, you have to be playing two of. Even if you do get extra deck rip for one of them, it's fine because as long as you have one in your extra deck, you're fine. We're playing one Phoenix, one IP Mascarena. This is kind of just all toolbox stuff. You don't go into it very often. A lot of this time, honestly, it's just prosperity fodder. But sometimes you can go into it. So we're playing the Unicorn as well as the Axis Code Talker. A lot of this stuff, like I said, other than these four cards, one, two, three, four, and then I guess the Dolka and the Logia, a lot of these are just toolbox cards going into depending on the matchups, right? So otherwise, this extra deck is pretty standard for Dino. I will say with this deck though, just before we head out here, is that when you're building your side deck, you definitely need to be able to build a side deck that just helps you going second, right? Dark Holes, Regekis, Lightning Storms, all of these kinds of cards, you definitely need to be playing because this deck, of course, at the end of the day, even though you do have some pretty good going second cards, the Ruma Cannon is not bad, Imperm is not bad, going second Tyranno is never bad, right? It's one of those things. But at the end of the day, you know, you really don't want to be playing so many trap cards going second. So games two and games three, if you know you're going to be going second, second you really want to side in a bunch of go second cards but that's it for the deck I, I think you guys definitely need to try it out for yourselves again it's one of those things where yes it may look weird but in theory it just it just really is nice on paper like it makes a lot of sense and i think in practice it's also pretty powerful so you guys should try it out for yourselves and let me know what you guys think so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that is my take on trap dino for today's format i know it's a deck again that's built kind of weird and it's very different than your typical dino stuff but i think you guys should definitely try it it out now if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel but we do a full 10 videos per week five long videos five short videos you guys are going to get a little bit of everything so thank you guys all for watching i appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart we're on the road to 10,000. let let's make it happen thank you guys and with that spanko signing out peace